In this video, we're going to talk about how to design reliable and scalable webhooks with RabbitMQ. Let's start by understanding what are webhooks. Right? Webhooks, if you don't already know, is a user-defined HTTP callback that is triggered by an event. When that event occurs, one site is going to invoke the behavior on another site through the HTTP callbacks. And the reason why we want to use webhooks is that it can create a loosely coupled architecture. Webhooks are a great way to integrate multiple systems together. So let's take a look at the typical webhook workflow. All right, so here you have two sites, site A and you have site B. When an event occurs in site A, it's going to create an HTTP request, which is going to be the callback to site B. And then from there, you're going to get a, re a HTTP response. And then that basically is the typical webhook workflow, right? So first an event occurs in site A, right? And then that generates a callback and that callback is represented by a HTTP request with the payload message. That payload message could be XML, JSON, or any other message type. And from there, it will call into the web server of the site B, right? And internally, the site B will, it will process that message and then commit the changes to some permanent storage. And then finally, it will return with a HTTP 200 status code. And then that's how we know that that HTTP callback was successful. And then after that, that event will be marked as process and it will never be redelivered again. Let's take a look at what happens if site B is unreachable or the request time is out. When we make the request to site B and we cannot reach site B for whatever reason, such as network outage or the, uh, or the web server is not available, right? Then we cannot deliver our message to site B. So in that case, it's important that site A has to keep the message and retry later, right? Cause if site A drops that message, then site B will never get that message again. And that's not really what we want to do. What if site B has an internal server error? This means that site B is running and we're able to connect to site B, but internally it cannot process the message for whatever reason, such as say, for example, the database is not available for it to commit the results, right? So in this case, an event occurs in site A and then it makes that HTTP request to site B and then internally it starts processing, but it cannot finish. So in this case, site B returns an HTTP 500 error, right? So any, any, uh, any error code in the 500 section would indicate that it was not able to process the message. So if you look from the previous slide, we only accept that the HTTP 200, 200 status code is uh, is acknowledgement of successfully processing that uh, HTTP request. Otherwise, we would assume that there is some failure. So in this case, it is important that site A must keep the message and retry later, right? So in summary, site A is always responsible for message reliability and site A cannot drop any messages. So how do we achieve that reliability, right? And one way you can do it is to use RabbitMQ. And so with RabbitMQ, you can introduce a message queue. And this message queue is responsible for keeping messages until they are successfully delivered, right? So in this uh, workflow, we introduce another element called the message queue. And that lives within RabbitMQ, right? So the workflow now becomes first, when an event occurs in site A, we publish that event message to the message queue. And then we have this process, the webhook invocation task which would be a consumer of this message queue. And this webhook invocation task is going to make the HTTP request with the payload to site B. And then the site B will return with a, with a success error code of 200. And then from there, once we have that success error code, this task can then act the message. And then once you act the message, then that message will be removed from the message queue. What if site B is unreachable or the request times out? So in this case, you still have the message queue. You have the webhook invocation task. In this case, the webhook invocation task cannot reach site B. And in order for site A to keep the messages, we would have to knock that message, right? If we, once we knock the message, 
the message will remain in the message queue and we can retry later, right? So in this case, if we only have one site, this web invocation task can uh, go to sleep or wait for a certain time out period before retrying again. What if we were able to reach site B, but internally it has a server error, right? So in this case, uh, it will return with a HTTP 500 error, right? In, in this case, we also, again, knock the message so we can keep it in the message queue and we can try, retry later. So this web invocation task will do the same as before, which is to, to uh, sleep for a certain time and then retry again. So now let's take a look at how we can make it scalable, right? Because before we made it reliable, but we also need to make it scalable, right? And scalable in a way that we can deliver messages to multiple sites. So in this workflow, we have multiple sites, right? We have a site B and we have a site C. So the challenge now is that how do we deliver to multiple sites when, when those sites potentially can be unreachable or has some internal server error, right? So the problem here is that when we deliver to site B and then site B uh, returns a 500 error code, which means it cannot process that message. This site A is responsible for keeping the message, but if we knack that message, it will keep it into this uh, event message queue. When it's in this event message queue, then we cannot deliver it to site C because the message that's in front of the queue is still destined for site B. Okay, so in this case, what you need to do if you want to handle multiple sites is to introduce another uh, message queue which can hold messages that are destined to be retried later. Right, so in this workflow, we have another message queue. And when this uh, webhook invocation task fails to deliver the message to one of those sites, it will push that event message to the retry later message queue. And then we have a rescheduler, which will later consume that message from this uh, retry later message queue and publish it to the, to the event message queue. So then this web hook invocation task can try that uh, callback later. So this webhook invocation task can retry the callback. So that's how you can architect a system that is scalable for webhooks, right? That handles multiple sites. In this case, we have two sites, site A and site C. So in summary, webhooks are great for integrating with external systems, but it comes with challenges. First, it has to handle the scenario when the external system is offline. It also has to handle the scenario when external systems fail and then potentially ca have to handle the, the, the scalability issue with delivering to multiple external systems concurrently and handle intermittent failures between external systems. RabbitMQ and message queues are building blocks for webhooks. By using RabbitMQ, you gain reliability with message queues and you also gain scalability by running multiple instances or processes. If you use RabbitMQ, you're going to gain the reliability and scalability out of the box, right? So there's no need for you to program uh, from the ground up. So thank you for watching and you can download the slides by looking for a link in the descriptions below.